us learn about creating the global status matrix for a single truss element. In order to do that, we will have to become familiar with the transformation matrix. So, if you remember, we had a truss element like this, and we said that we could have local coordinate systems shown in blue with X and Y, and the global, uh, global coordinate system, which is shown in red, X and Y without the hats, and they usually add a theta angle with respect to each other. And then we drew the free body diagrams for the element, and we showed the forces and displacements at the two nodes. So this is one element, and it has node 1 and node 2 there. And then we said from the conditions for the truss element that there is no transverse forces and no transverse displacements. We also said that there is no moments and there is no rotations as degrees of freedoms for the nodes of the truss. And we also found the local stiffness matrix of a single truss element to be something like this, EA over L times this two by two matrix. And then we said that it's two by two because we have two nodes, one and two, and we have one degree of freedom per node, D1X1 and D2X1. So forces are not degrees of freedom. That's why I don't want you to get confused with that. Forces are basically loads which are applied to a node but displacements or temperatures would be considered as degrees of freedom. In order to understand transformation matrix, let's start with this example. Let's say we have two coordinate systems, the global one which I have written or drawn with red, and the local one which I have drawn with blue, and the local ones have the hats on top of them, and we have an arbitrary point P in space. Now we want to see its location both in the local and global coordinate systems. So in x, y, the cap, uh, the, I was meaning to write y over there. Let me erase it. And let's switch back to pen. In the global coordinate system, I have x, p, and y, p for the point p, or the arbitrary point. And in the local coordinate system, x hat y hat, I can have x hat p and y hat p as the coordinates of the point. So this is x p and this is y p shown here and here. And here is x hat p and y hat p shown there. So if I look at this part, xp is equal to this length minus that length. So this is equal to this minus that. This part is equal to this length, which is equal to xp or x hat p times cos theta. And let me just say that this is also theta, the, the angle between the two coordinate systems. This, this distance would be yp, or y hat p, this location, which is this length, times sine theta. And so we know that xp, now it's equal to x hat p times cos theta minus y hat p times sine theta, which we have shown in here. Now similarly, y p is equal to this distance, right, this, all the way to here, plus this distance. So now this one is x p hat times sine theta, and this is y p hat times cos theta. And we have shown that here. Now, if I rearrange these two equations from 1, I'll end up with these two equations. Basically, the relationship between the local coordinates, or local coordinates of point P and its global coordinates. And theta is the angle between the two coordinate systems. I can also write that in a matrix format. So I have a vector of 
uh, local coordinates of point P and I have a vector of the global coordinates of point P and then I can write this 2 by 2 transformation matrix cos theta sine theta because xp hat if you look at here is equal to cos theta times xp plus sine theta times yp so cos theta times xp plus sine theta times yp and yp hat is equal to minus xp times sine theta plus yp times cos theta so minus sine theta times xp cos theta times yp and that creates a transformation matrix for two coordinate systems so we had this transformation matrix and from before we had the nodal forces in the local coordinate system and nodal displacement in a local coordinate system and I know that it's local because of the hats that I put on top of the notations D and F now I have the global ones without the hat signs both F and D for node 1 and here I've written them for node 2 basically the same so if I want to convert the nodal forces from the local coordinate system to the global coordinate system I would multiply that by the transformation matrix that I have so the local ones are equal to T transformation matrix times the global ones again the local displacements are equal to the transformation matrix the same matrix as above times the global displacements or nodal displacements of the node 1 and the same is true for node 2 now I can use this to drive the global surface matrix for a truss element